Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan, and in this video, we are going to learn about a new feature of Entity Framework Core 6, and that is migration bundles. The idea of migration bundles is that they are an executable file which will contain all of the migrations of your application. And you can produce that file, that executable file, so that it can run on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And if you produce that file using the self-contained option, you will be able to run it on any environment that doesn't have the .NET runtime installed. Now, if you have been working in the past with Entity Framework Core, you may think that this is similar to a migration script. And it is similar, but the migration bundle is superior. It is superior because it handles an a specific use case that the migration script cannot handle. We're going to see that at the end of this video, but we're going to start with the basics of migration bundles. So let's get started. We are here in Visual Studio. This is a new console application with .NET 6. And what we're going to do first is that we're going to install Entity Framework Core in our application. For that, we're going to come to the NuGet Package Manager. Let me come here and let me install Entity Framework Core for SQL Server. Let me accept this. And now let me click on Tools and also install this. Accept. Now, something else that I like to do is that I like to turn off the nullable property here so that we are not using nullable reference types on our application. This is a personal preference that I have, so you don't have to do this. Now, let me close this and let me create an application DB contest. This is going to be a small application, a small sample application, so we're not really going to be writing too much code. Let me inherit from DB context control dot and let me say override on configuring and let me say here options builder use SQL server and let me create here a connection string server dot database example migration bundle and integrated security equal to true semicolon here. Now let me create an entity. Let me create a class, add class, and let me call it person. And let me put two properties here, ID and name. Now let me make it a entity, an entity by using a DB set of person here. I'll call it people. This will be the name of the table, people. Now let me add a migration. As you may know, a migration is just a representation of the changes that are going to occur in the database in response to the changes that I do to my entities. So as you can see here, we have create table, people, and these two properties. Now we can see here that we have nbarchar max. Let's say that I want to fix that by doing a new migration. So let me come back to person and let me say here a string length control dot and I will put 150 and now let me make another migration. I will name this one second. And as you can see, we have type n bar char 150 here. Okay, so now if I wanted to, I could do an update database command to create our database. That is fine, but this video is about working with migration bundles. So we're going to do this using migration bundles. Another way you can see a migration bundle is like a update database command put into an executable file. So maybe this is because Entity Framework Core 6 is still very new. As you can see from this csproj file, we're using version 6.0.1. So it is very early. It is a very early version, but there is a bug here. If I say exactly bundle migration, if I say bundle migration, you are going to see that we're going to have an error. This is apparently normal right now. There are some other folks with this error. Maybe by the time you are watching this, this bug has been fixed. But for now, we have to do the following to fix it. We have to use the EF core CLI. So let's go to here, right click here. I want to go to the folder and here I will shift right click to open PowerShell window here. And here I have PowerShell 
And what I want to do is to issue the following command, .NET EF migrations bundle. This is the same command that we were doing in Visual Studio, but this is the version for the .NET EF GLE. So .NET EF migrations bundle, and I want to say here, configuration bundle. This configuration bundle is what fixes that bug for now. So let me say enter, and as you can see, the build is started, succeeded, building bundle, and it is done. So what this does is that it produces this EF bundle executable file here, and I can run this against any SQL Server database. So I just mentioned SQL Server database, but that is because I am using migrations for SQL Server. If I were using, for example, migrations for PostgreSQL, then I will be able to use this for PostgreSQL. So having said that, let me go back here and I want to do the following. I want to say EFB tap. So I want to say connection. I will run this file and I will pass the connection string. I will pass this connection string that we have here. I will copy this and I'll paste that here. And here, as you can see, we're going to run this migration bundle against this database. Now, this database doesn't exist, so it will be created. Let me press enter. And as you can see, we have that the first and second migration were applied. Okay, excellent. Now, let me come to SQL Server Management Studio. Let me prove to you that this was created. Let me refresh here. And here, as you can see, we have example migration bundle, which is our database. And we have tables and we have people. And in people, we have columns, ID, and name. And name is of type and bar car 150. So, okay, this is great. This is working. Now, what is that use case which a script migration doesn't cover that migration bundles does? Let's see that. Let's say that I want to create a view and I want to create that view. I want to have that view in a migration so that every time I generate the database for on the migrations, I get the same view. Okay, that is reasonable. So let's come here and let me create a third and final migration, third. And here we're going to put the code of the view. Let me say migration builder. Let me say SQL. And here I will put the following code, create view. Let me say DVO, I'll say my view because I'm really creative. Let me, oh, let me add this add here so that we can do this. Now let me say us and let me say here, select ID and name from DVO, DVO people. This is going to be a really simple view. Let me say migration builder, SQL, drop view, dvo dot my view, semicolon here. Okay, this is great. So now again, if I wanted to, I could issue an update database command, but because we are trying to learn how to use migration bundles, we're going to do a migration bundle. Now, let me come back here. I need to run again this command this .NET EF migrations bundle, configuration bundle, but I need to use force. I need to use force so that we can substitute, we can replace this EF bundle file that we have here. So let me press enter and you are going to see that after a few seconds, it will succeed. So as you can see, it is done. So we have a new EF bundle. So now I can rerun again the EF bundle.x against my database. So let me press enter one more time and you're going to see something. You are going to see that now only the third migration was applied. Why? Because the first and second migration were already applied to the database. So the migration bundle only applies those migrations that are pending. Excellent. And by the way, if I try to rerun the same EF bundle against the same database, we're going to get the message no migrations were applied because there are no pending migrations to be applied against our database. So let's go to the database and let's see that we have our view here. Let's see views and we have my view here. Excellent. But I told you that migrations script were not able to do this. Let's see that. Let me come back here and let's say 
a script migration let me press enter this is not what i want to do but let me press enter first so that you can see that it works we have a script here and we have our view here excellent but this is not the same as what we have here as you can see here we are only applying the migrations that are pending in order to have that functionality in this script we have to do it we have to issue this script using the item potent option so let me come here and let me say dash item potent enter and now we're going to have a different script one that actually checks for the migrations to be already present before trying to do them for example here we're checking if this migration has been applied before creating the table people table and so on but if we go down here we are going to see that we have an error here we're going to see that in our custom SQL code with my view, which is a custom view that we created ourselves in the migration, this doesn't work. We have here a syntax error. And if I copy this, just so you see that this error also occurs here, you are going to see that we have a syntax error here, which means that we cannot use a custom view with a script migration which is a problem because if we have a continuous delivery process, we're not going to be able to repeatedly apply this script to the database because it will fail. But that did not happen with the migration bundle, which means that right now, at least in Entity Framework Core 6, migration bundles are superior to migration script because they can handle more use cases than the migration script therefore right now it seems that it is the best practice to use migration bundles because then you are going to be able to have your own code your own views your own custom sql code in your migrations and you will not have problems like this problem that we have here so from now on try to use migration bundles whenever you can because they handle more use cases than migration script Thank you.